Hi guys, as the title suggests, this is in fact a spoiler review of Avengers Endgame. So if you haven't seen it, then stop watching right now, go see the movie, come back and maybe get involved in the conversation below. So I'm going to talk about the movie in general, tell you what I liked more or less, maybe a bit what I didn't like, and then we're going to get into it in a little bit more, a little bit more detail. There are some great set pieces in this movie, so many great moments, way too many to mention, but I'll mention just a few of my favourites. I really liked Paul Rudd's character, Scott Lang, and the, the moment when he reunited with his daughter. I mean, I thought he did a great job in this movie um, from start to finish, but especially that opening scene with him, uh, his opening scene. I really liked Thor reuniting with his mother. I thought that was really sweet. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Professor Hulk and the first time travel test was so great and so funny. It was just fantastic. And of course, uh, Thor in New Asgard, uh, again, very, very funny, incredible, absolutely brilliant. I think the, the scene where Tony Stark meets his dad was lovely and the conversation that they have about fatherhood is excellent. I think that's possibly definitely one of my favorites. I know, I'm a sentimental old fool, what can I do? I, I, can't, I can't help it. But there are so many great scenes in this movie. Um, there's no way you could mention them all, otherwise you'd want an hour long, an hour long review or whatever. Um, overall, I love the story. I love the plot twist. I love the time travel element in the film. It's fiction. I mean, you just gotta accept it. I didn't initially like Professor Hulk. I have to be honest, I didn't really like it. Uh, and, and I don't like the fact that we don't get um, a rematch between Hulk and Thanos. And that, for me, is a real disappointment. I, I just, he needed, to, he needed to come face to face with Thanos again, I think. I love the opening scene with uh, Clint, AKA Hawkeye. It was absolutely a fantastic way to open the movie, picking it up from where Infinity War left off. Uh, I think Jeremy Renner puts in a superb performance and his character does really, really well in this movie. He does really, really well in this movie. He has a much bigger role, I think, in this movie than in others, and he nails it. It's absolutely fabulous. I loved every second of it. Moving on then, we catch up with, in the movie, we catch up with Tony Stark and Nebula, Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Karen Gillan, lost in space type of situation, floating around, running out of food, water, oxygen, 22 days after the big snap, as uh, he says, as he makes his recording to Pepper Potts. Um, you kind of guess that that stage, you know, especially from the trailers, and it has to be Captain Marvel who rescues him and brings him back to Earth, which, which happens. I mean, you, you just kind of know that. Uh, I love the slow pace of the start of this movie. I mean, it takes time rebuilding the characters, the relationships, and all that, I absolutely loved it. it, it it's, it's just fabulous. When the movie moves on then five years, we see how still they're trying to pick up the pieces, they're trying to cope, they're, they're, you know, they're trying to reconnect with people. We, we, I mean, we, we see Steve Rogers hosting what looks like a support group, doing what he can. Um, and, 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 and his monologue of, of when, 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 he, when he says that, uh, referencing Thanos, when he says that uh, Thanos may have well have killed everyone if people don't try to move on and reconnect with other people. Uh, I thought that was really, really cool. Now, I wasn't mad about the rat turning on the quantum van thing. I mean, the whole universe comes back or gets fixed or they go on an adventure because of this rat who accidentally turns on, bringing back Ant-Man, played by Paul Rudd, like I said. Um, and I just, hey, look, it could, look, I don't, I just, I don't know. I don't know how else they could, they could have done slightly better, I think. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Scarlett Johansson has a great scene when she's talking to um, War Machine and she reflects the loss uh, of her loss, personal loss, and of course, Clint being in the wind and asking, asking War Machine to find him. After, uh, of course, after Paul, <laughs> after Paul Rudd's character, Ant-Man turns up, which we saw in the trailer, and he, he explains, uh, or he has the beginnings of a plan um, to do time travel, uh, I thought it was class. And then they go find Tony, who is, at this stage, is um, living the simple life with his wife 
and his daughter at the edge of a lake, um, nice and quiet. And, and I, that moment <clears throat> I thought was lovely as well. I loved the reference to other movies in this. I love the Back to the Future movies, and it's a continu continual theme and other time, time travel movies as well. Uh, and I think you can even hear a couple of musical nods. Now, I could be wrong, but I think I could hear the Back to the Future sound when they're in the Avenger, Avengers headquarters and Tony is looking through the bars at what's going on. And then when um, Nebula and War Machine uh, are at trying to find their stone and he referenced Raiders of the Lost Ark with the spikes and the skeletons and the spears and everything. I definitely think there's a Raiders team mixed in just as she approaches the stone. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Did you hear it? I heard it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wishful thinking. When we first get introduced to Professor Holt, the first time I saw the movie, I, 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 I didn't like it. I, 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 and part of me still doesn't, but for a different reason. Now, he's funny, he's very, very funny, but I just didn't like it initially. I liked it more the second time, uh, but I liked, I, liked the, I liked the film in general more the second time I saw it as a whole. I just I really enjoyed it the second time. I felt Smart Hulk or Professor Hulk wasn't as powerful or as, uh, as Raging Hulk. It was, one, it, it, it was one of my major dislikes about the movie, centers around the whole Hulk and his story arc but I'll come back to that later. Now, I don't know if you caught it, but I caught it, and maybe I'm wrong, but Nat's uh, reference to pulling this off, uh, I took that as a reference to him and her, you know, getting jiggy with it, you know what I mean? But again, comment below, did you get that issue referring to something else? I think, you know, they got it wrong, whatever. Um, I, I mentioned already that this is a really, really funny moment, or a really funny movie, and has some great, incredible one-liners. It's both humorous, but it's also inspiring. I love the time travel testing scene. Um, and, and it was here I began liking Professor Hulk then. I loved the Tony Stark and Steve Rogers re reunion. I thought that was cool uh, when Tony figures it out and comes back. Um, the, movie then <laughs> the movie then takes a serious turn left and becomes full-blown comedy, a spoof almost, as uh, Professor Hulk and Rocket go to recruit Thor, who, uh, who, as Tony mentioned, turns in ter has turned into the big Lebowski with the pot bear belly, uh, you know, beer drinking hippie type. <coughs> Some people won't won't get the reference in the movie, but uh, they, they might look at him, you know, the big Lebowski. You know, I thought it was fabulous. Um, Thor is obviously still hurting um, in this sequence. Um, from what happened with Thanos. I love the fact that it was Nat that went to get Clint. And one of my favorite lines in the movie is when she turns around to him and after the conversation and says, I wish I could have given you hope sooner. And I thought that was lovely. That was just class. I mean, it was just real, real. It was real emotion. I thought it was really class. Um, after that, we get a, we have a plan then. and We move into the middle part of the movie. This is the middle part. That was just the first half or the first a third. Um, so they work out who's going to go get the stones from uh, in the past, etc. And I love how the music builds as Cap gives his prep talk as all the team are getting all riled up, ready to go as teams into the three or four, whatever timelines it is. This is a great movie. Uh, I, I, I think I, I love the middle part of the movie. I loved all the callbacks to the previous movies, them sneaking around, real Back to the Future style, uh, and we get some really cool cameos from previous characters. And I think they make an awful, awful difference. I think a, a fair play to them for coming back for their one day or the two day shooting. And fair, I mean, great job. Uh, one of my, my one of my favorite moments, probably my second favorite moment, is with Thor and uh, his mum, uh, Rene Russo, um, and she has, the she has one of the best lines in the movie, probably the second best line in the movie. Everyone fails who, are their, who they are supposed to be. The measure of a person is how well they succeed at being the person they are. What a great line. 
absolutely class line. It's rivaled only by Tony Stark's line later on, and I'll get to that. But even through that serious moment, the humour still flows. Rock is still cracking jokes, and, and Thor is cracking jokes. It's just class. At this stage of the movie, then, it, it jumps again. It goes into another um, storyline following the other team. It must have been an absolute nightmare to put this uh, movie together. The editor must be doing a nut. But it's done so well as we jump from different year to different year. But yet, it, it keeps us on the string each time. And it's absolutely class. We get introduced to Thanos as well. So we've got four threads going on then. But it's past Thanos. And we got a Star Wars reference, which I missed the first time around, but I got the second time around, where he says something about how it clouds your judgment. Uh, which was really, really cool. I really like that. Uh, I love how the story, the, the plot of the story twists at this stage and that we've got a twist in it, and etc. Uh, and then we, we're, we're jumping back again uh, to New York. We hear that uh, sound by or the music uh, from Back to the Future. Uh, I thought I thought I could hear it anyway, you know. Uh, with the, the Hulk scene where he has to, he has to, he's coming to the lift, Angry Hulk, and he comes down the stairs, and I much prefer Angry Hulk. I just, I just, you know, there's something raw rage about it. I just think it's class. Uh, the whole Captain America fighting Captain America scene was really well done, but I don't think it was needed. It could have been cut. I don't think, they, I don't think it served any purpose really. I just, you know, take it or leave it. You know, well done. It was a great, great scene, but I don't know. When we get it reintroduced to Quill, to past Quill and that classic, classic song by Redbone, which, which coincidentally is my ringtone on my phone. Um, uh, it, it's just, you know, Rhodey and Nebula, you know, they go after, after one of the stones and, and they have to get the key. They knock him out, they get the key and they go into the Temple of Power. We get the Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, nods by, by uh, Rhodey. I think it was really, just listen to that, listen to that as she walks towards it. There is definitely a uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark theme thrown in there. As, 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 as the, the plot develops then and the, we get the twist and Thanos throws the throws a spanner in the works and and he has to adjust his plan at this point and use the whole time travel thing in, uh, to his advantage which i thought was really clever and suddenly we have two nebulas in the one space which was really cool um then it jumps again and we follow we get cap and tony stark and they fail on their mission so they gotta figure out another way so they go even further back in time uh, back to the 19, is it the 40s or the 50s? It's probably the 40, late 40s, early 50s. And that cameo from Stan Lee as he waves or as he drives by. The theatre erupted uh, when that happened uh, in the screening I was at. And and when Tony meets uh, his dad, that's my favourite scene in the movie. And they have that really, really sweet conversation uh, about fatherhood and whatnot. And that line, uh, no amount of money uh, can buy a second of time. I love that line. I just thought it was fabulous. Um, we get to see Jarvis, which is kind of cool. And we get to see Michael Douglas in a cameo, which was excellent. And, and they de aged him. And seeing him run down the corridor, yeah, tell you what it reminded me of. It reminded me so much of when he, he was in a, he started in a show called The Streets of San Francisco with Carl, Carl Malden. And, and he was always running uh, after the bad guy. But it just reminded me so much. I just thought it was class. Uh, there's a lovely moment then as well in the round then when we cut to Steve Rogers as he sees Peggy Carter and the music comes up and it's it's just really lovely. Um, the moment we catch up with Nat and Clint as they go after their stone, you just know what's going to happen. You just don't know which one is going to die. Um, it's very sad. Uh, Black Widow was one of my favourites and is definitely one of one of the moments where tears were were shed in the cinema. Not by me now, because I'm tough as nails, you know. Not really, no. Um, but certainly by others, there was a few sniffles you could hear around. And but it was a really sad moment. As we move then into the third part of the movie, we get the second snap that brings everybody back. Um, but Thanos also comes in then. And the final battle begins. Jeremy Renner, like I said, as Hawkeye does really well in this sequence. Uh, I'd be interested to see the screen times for each character. 
um, because I'd say he, he's got he's he's fairly high up there now. It's a the battle between Thanos, Thor, Captain America, and Iron Man is where I kind of have an issue, or maybe even later on, you know, when they're battling together, uh, why couldn't they have they brought the Hulk here? I mean, it, it the Hulk should have got a rematch, Rage Hulk, you know, Hulk out. And even if even if he got you know, I I, I just thought it, it, the Hulk deserved a second crack at Thanos, um, but it never happened. As of course, as the, the 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 snap comes into play, then we get the you know all the heroes start coming back, and and then his his army comes one way, and and the, the you know the Avengers army comes the other way, um, and all hell breaks loose then basically. But I think if not when the three main characters were fighting Thanos, why didn't they let Hulk come into it more and have some you know, special moments as well? But he, he kind of disappears into the crowd. I, I suppose it was difficult, really. Uh, I just thought the Hulk would have been better. I mean, it would have been great to see him have a, a second crack um, at, at Thanos, really. You know, you know, as, you know, as things are about to end then, and. They're about to lose, or the, the, the tide needs to be turned. Our newest member of the Avengers, Captain Marvel, comes back, crashes through the spaceship, you know, destroys it completely. Um, I, and then, of course, Thanos has to do something special to take her out of the, out of the equation. So he takes off the, probably the power stone, I think it was, punches her, that's her out of it. Wasn't mad about the whole girl power thing, but afterwards I realised it was a reference to A Force in the comics, etc., um, blah blah blah. So then Thanos has the gauntlet again after that, and I loved, I absolutely loved the way uh, Tony Stark gets the stones, and uh, and 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 Thanos says, oh, you know, was well, I am in inevitable, and then he he tries to snap his fingers, and nothing happens, and then Tony Stark comes back with, I am. Iron Man, which was fabulous, absolutely fabulous. I love that moment. But from that moment on, and he clicks his fingers, you know he's a goner. I thought it was really tastefully done. Um, <laughs> who will carry on the mantle of Ireland neck, or Iron Man next will be interesting. I mean, it would be great would be if they, if they, in a movie, they held some auditions for the part and they brought in a load of cameos from movie stars and TV stars and sports stars and stuff like that. That would be really, really funny. Uh, I thought that was, I, I, you know, there's an idea for you. The funeral scene was lovely. The last farewell and all the different characters represented in their various themes, with a few exceptions. Gamora wasn't there. Valkyrie wasn't there. I didn't see her there. Uh, they were missing, but I, and I don't know why, but I really liked that sequence as well. Like I said, um, I love when, when Fury comes out as well, it was just fabulous. Two issues with the movie, big time. I didn't like when Falcon gets the Ameri Captain America shield. I think that's wrong. Only because, only because he's not an enhanced human. Captain, Mar or Captain America was superhuman here. You know, he's strength, speed, stamina, all that. Sam Wilson's character, or um, yeah, Sam Wilson, the character, he doesn't. Now, I know there have been a number of comics down through the years um, and a number of different characters have taken up the mantle as Captain America, but Falcon Samuel doesn't have the super strength, doesn't have stamina, etc. Um, you know, I just thought it was wrong. And of course, the Hulk thing, I didn't like that either. Like I said at the start of the video, I want to change the score and now I now want to, you know, after seeing it for the second time, I want to up the score to give it a four point, maybe a four point eight out of five. The only real issues were personal issues for me was that I would have liked to have seen Thanos have a go at, uh, or Hulk have a go at Thanos and the whole Captain America passing on the mantle, etc. Uh, that's my take on my opinions on Avengers Endgame. If you've stuck with me this long, well done. <laughs> and. Thank you, sincerely. Absolutely great. Thank you very much. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what your favourite parts were or your favourite lines. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Did you hear those musical references? Maybe I'm going daft. 
Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Please, please leave any comments um, in the comments section below. Please be respectful. Like I said, everybody's entitled to an opinion. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And uh, if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. And I'll catch you all on the flip side. TTFN. Oh.